Hi everybody, hello and welcome. I hope you guys are having the best day ever. Um, this is a really beautiful plant here. This is Calicarpa bodnieri, named after Emily Bodnier, who was a French uh, botanist who studied plants in China. Um, and I just want to show you because it's kind of in its perfect time of the year. So uh, fall is really when this plant shines. So beauty berries are named as such because, I mean, they're absolutely incredibly beautiful and um, they have a really beautiful, graceful growth habit. And another thing I want to say is there's so, so, so many different kinds of calicarpa. The genus calicarpa itself is a member of the Lamiaceae family and the classification Lamiales, which is a family that's familiar for many different types of hardy herbs. Uh, it's the same family that you'll find things like sage and rosemary in. So calicarpas are native all over the world. There's some that are from America, there's some from Southern America, there's some from Asia, Europe, um, even varieties from Africa. But this particular cultivar is called Profusion and it has the Royal Horticulture Merit Award. So it's really well renowned and um, just appreciated around gardens in all over the world. So a couple of key facts about this plant, uh, they're technically not uh, toxic and you can actually make a syrup from their clusters of berries. Um, you're going to want to make sure that these berries are ripe. Uh, they'll turn into a dark metallic-y kind of true purple. Uh, you can make a really beautiful jelly or jam or concentrate out of them, very similar to how you would with a elderberry or sambucus, uh, the black lace elderberry in particular. Uh, if you mix them with sugar and boil them down and reduce them into a syrup, it's quite nutritious actually. Be very, very, very careful if you are foraging these guys just to make sure that you know exactly what you are, um, you know, harvesting to make sure that it actually is calicarpa because these guys are very similar to different kinds of nightshades which are toxic in terms of their fruiting structures. So I just rotated this guy so you guys can kind of appreciate their form. Uh, Profusion, Calicarpia, uh, Calicarpa bodniari in particular has a really nice sweeping form. There's other varieties of Calicarpa that have a much higher form, uh, but in general they're more of a spreading upright kind of plant. This one just in particular has this kind of swooping feature. They have really attractive fall foliage. You're going to want to keep these berries on for birds. Uh, it's a scarce resource food that a lot of different animals will uh, turn to. Not their favorite um, food, but it's definitely a good secondary food to leave for wildlife. Uh, this needs really good well-drained soil. It's a bit more of an understory plant in its native habitat of central uh, China. So it doesn't necessarily need really incredibly bright light, but you're going to get more lustrous and bigger berry um, clumps and clusters if you have it in a more bright light location. Not too fussy on soil, it's definitely not a heavy feeder by any means. Uh, it grows in very similar soils to plants like nine bark, just as long as they're very fibrous, relatively neutral to acidic pH, and they drain really well, and they can dry out in the summer between waterings. That's exactly what this plant favors. Uh, this particular variety will get to about eight feet wide, about 10 feet tall. I think that's kind of pushing it though. Usually in horticultural spaces, they kind of keep a little bit shorter. Uh, another thing I want to say is, so they'll set flowers in the summer, typically July and August, sometimes as early as June, and the berries will all mature kind of around October. And they persist for a really long time, especially in areas that don't get zapped by like intense cold frosts, like, you know, heavy frosts in October, November, they'll actually persist a little bit longer into even up to January sometimes. And the plant will be, get entirely defoliated, it'll enter a hemidormant state, and these clusters of berries will actually stay. They look really attractive as like a cut branch in a vase, they're very decorative, um, they dry really well, they maintain their color, they're kind of awesome that way. So another really important thing that I want to talk about is shaping and pruning. So you do not want to prune these guys in the summer. If you prune them in the summer, you're not going to get any berries and it'll take them a really long time to rebound. You do not want to prune them in the fall because obviously, you know, the biggest appeal is the fall color and the berries in general, but they are still in an active growing state. So you're going to get rid of some of their buds for future growth. If you're going to prune these, prune them relatively lightly or coppice them depending on kind of what you want as your mature form. If you coppice them, that means essentially cutting them down to the ground and waiting for a bunch of spurs to regrow. 
This may negatively impact the overall general form as the plant kind of matures years down the road. If you want more of a standard, definitely just a little bit of light pruning. Best time to do that in the northern hemisphere is definitely February in my experience. This is a plant that benefits from late winter, kind of mid-winter pruning. So you're going to want to wait until all of your leaves fall off. You're going to want to wait until your buds stop bulging and stop producing new terminal tips. You're going to want to make sure all of your berries are for the most part, you know, kind of vacated from the plant and that they've fallen. Uh, and you're going to want to wait until all of these clusters look kind of like bare branches. And then you're going to want to prune it back. Uh, it's okay if you prune it in the cold. This is not a very sap heavy plant. It'll definitely rebound from that, but you're going to want to prune them when they're fully dormant. So that's tail end of February, early March, mid February in the Northern hemisphere, depending on where you live. Um, beautiful, beautiful leaves. They're in opposite arrangement. That's another key ID feature. Sorry, I just realized that this is not actually focused at all. Um, I don't know if this reminds you guys of like dogwoods, red osier dogwood, but it's an incredibly similar opposite fashion that they grow in. Uh, if you get this kind of weird fuzzy kind of brown hairiness on the leaves, this is totally normal. This is just the juvenile hairs that they grow. Um, this isn't super, you know, susceptible to fungal problems, but it does get a little bit of mildew in wetter areas in the winter. But generally speaking, it's not super prone to fungal issues. Um, I'm not focused again, so sorry about that, you guys. Um, <laughs> there we go. I have it in a pot right now because I simply don't have any space to plant it in right now. But this is a plant that truly does better in ground. It kind of resents being in pots just from what I've seen. You can grow it in pots, but you're definitely not going to get as many berries. The berries don't persist quite as long. And I mean, just in general, they don't tend to overwinter quite as well. It takes them a little bit longer to wake up in the spring if you have them in containers. But that being said, if you have a patio garden or some small place that you have to grow them in, they should be just fine. So I hope that I covered some of the bases on this plant. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful classic. All Calicarpa are, but I really have to recommend Calicarpa budneri just for its um, more compact habit. It's got kind of a sprawling, undulating branch habit, and just the colors of the berries are just incredible. Um, yeah, have a wonderful day, you guys. Stay blessed and be healthy, and yeah, have a good one. Until next time.